What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Establish Runs NBA Injury Report Analysis Show. A fantastic Friday, not a fan Friday, unfortunately. <laughs> just a fan won't be joining us today. Just myself and Mike Gallagher to walk you through this eight-game slate. Uh, Mike, how are you feeling about this eight-gamer tonight? Yeah, feeling pretty good. Got a uh, kind of hurt my toe. I think as I sit on my leg sometimes when I'm working, I think I like messed it up, so I couldn't go hiking today. So the good news is I got to look at the mids for a little bit longer today, and uh, you know, did a little stat digging. So it should be a good show. Uh, despite no fan, uh, all the best to him. Uh, nice. Let's uh, let's get into this game by game perspective. We'll keep it uh, definitely under an hour today and, and keep it tight in general. Let's start with Charlotte and Washington on the Charlotte side. Uh, they're still without Lamelo Ball, Seth Curry, Cody Martin, Mark Williams, um, Alexi Bokashevsky listed out, as well as Leaky Black and Amari Bailey. Questionable tag on Trey Mann tonight. So, what does that mean for Charlotte uh, in a friendly environment against the Wizards? Yeah, this is it. We were in the G League tracker. Uh, that's a sign that they're pretty shorthanded. So their G League guys are in Birmingham today. We saw them playing Grand Rapids earlier this week. That was with the Mari Bailey, Leaky Black. So I don't think they're going to promote them. But they do have Nick Smith Jr. available. He would probably enter the rotation if they didn't have Trey Mann. I don't know what's up with this injury. He closed last game. So, yeah, I don't have much to go on. But he's listed with a groin strain. Not great. Uh, so I definitely think there's a good chance he misses. There's a couple options here that could replace him. Um, but first, I want to lead with what uh, Vesely Misic has been doing. He has been leading the ball, a lead handler a ton, a ton of pick and roll possessions. Uh, matchups obviously fantastic here, uh, and really one of the best game environments of the night. We'll talk about more in a second here. But so the candidates to start would be Grant. I, I think I could see them starting, um, you know, double big here. Um, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Uh, the other candidates would be Bryce McGowan's and then Nick Smith Jr. I don't think they would start Bertans. I think they kind of like him off the bench. Uh, but then the other thing here is the minutes. Man, we got 38 on Miles Bridges. This is a pretty tight spread since both these teams are quite bad. Uh, we've seen Brandon Miller play a ton. Wizards don't draw too many fouls. So there's a, and obviously Nick Richards, you know, the Wizards give up the most points off offense or second most points off offensive rebounds. They have the most rim points. Uh, they give up the most points off cuts. It's just like big man festival. So Nick Richards could certainly pop off here uh, in what could be one of the tightest rotations of the night. All right. On to the Washington side where they're without Marvin Bagley and Landry Shamet, as well as Isaiah Livers. How does that impact the Wizards rotation tonight? Yeah, Landry Shamit's kind of a big deal. Uh, we saw last game there was some foul trouble from Corey Kispert, who got the start in the last game uh, to really cut him down. But he got talked up a bunch after the game, and Brian Keith basically said they're going to play him a little bit more here. So, um, yeah, same starting lineup. Uh, Tyus, Blalko, Bali, Denny Avdia, Kispert, and Kuzma at the five. Uh, the bench, there will be a, a lot of Jordan Poole. Uh, he's consistently been hitting the 30-minute mark when the games are close, huge usage. The usage is way up. The pick and roll handling the last couple games has like almost doubled from where it was before. So uh, he has a really strong role off the bench. One of the best bench roles in the NBA. He is not winning six men here. Uh, Rashawn Holmes picked up a good bit of the backup big spot here. We'll see if that should continue. Um, and that actually is part of the reason why the Jordan Poole pick and roll numbers came up so high because uh, Rashawn Holmes has sent a bunch of picks for him. Um, and then uh, Eugene Omiyuri snuck in there. And then Johnny Davis, uh, he had a pretty good minutes role, got talked up after the game. Brian Keefe says they need him to play more defense. Without Landry Shamit, he could get over 20 minutes here. I think, I think that's possible. Now, you can't really do anything with that. Um, but yeah, and then obviously, you know, Tyus Jones, Boal, Cool, Bali, those guys could all hit. Um, you know, 30, 30 minutes. You know, we've seen Kuzma play upper 30s in close games. Wizards on this losing streak. Uh, definitely uh, kind of a lot to, to like about this game. The, it is the Mike Gallagher bad basketball game of the night. It is. Um, all right, let's move to New Orleans and Philadelphia. On the New Orleans side of things, their injury report in terms of the star power is relatively clean here. They're still without Dyson Daniels, uh, though, and Cody Zeller is still listed as available with a face mask, which is uh, two months running of being listed available with the face mask, which just still slays me. Uh, but no questionable tags on any of the main Pels here. So uh, what are your notes on the Pelicans tonight? Yeah, I want to talk handling, and I want to talk about C.J. McCombs lack of handling. He has plummeted uh, in the handling rankings. It was actually Brandon Ingram uh, who led in handling, who was you know kind of pulling from Zion. They've been shifting their offense a little bit more to Brandon Ingram. We've talked about how bad the 76ers defense is, one of the worst in the NBA since Joel Embiid went down, and, uh, and their first game without him was on February 1st. So big spots for Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, 
Um, and then, you know, Joe Val, we've seen him fluctuate. You know, the matchup should be pretty good, uh, especially since the Sixers are playing a little bit smaller. The game could play small. We saw a lot of Batum at center. Talk about that in a second. He is questionable. That will affect some things. But, yeah, starting five, good to go. And then we got to talk about Trey Murphy. Uh, career high 10 threes. He's playing a ton, putting with 30 minutes on the regular. He is locked and loaded, one of the most valuable six men right now. He won't win the award. was out too early. Uh, and then, you know, Larry Nance, Jose Alvarado's locked in minutes. He actually out-touched CJ. Uh, in the last game because of blowout, but so interesting to see that happen there. It's really just showing how much CJ's going to come down. Um, and yeah, Najee Marshall's locked loaded, so pretty much good to go. And again, a really good matchup that's not a back to back. Uh, Philadelphia side of the equation, they're still without Joel Embiid, Robert Covington, Tyrese Maxey, and DeAnthony Melton. And then as you lose to a questionable tag on Nicholas Batum, um, so how does that impact what we see from Philadelphia tonight? Yeah, late day ad uh, for Batum. Well, not midday, we'll call it. We won't call it late. Um, so that's kind of a big deal. Uh, we saw them start him uh, next to Paul Reed. They are going to get Kyle Lowry back after starting him and picking up a huge handling role. He was the lead handler um, and the front end of the back to back. This game on the screen is the back end of a back to back. Really bad loss to the Grizzlies, to pretty much lock them into the play in, I would say. Um, but yeah, so we're expecting the starting lineup to be Kyle Lowry. Campaign's going to start, uh, but I think he's going to start. Um, Buddy Heald, Tobias Harris, and then we think Paul Reed. We saw Paul Reed get back in the starting lineup to almost kick Mo Bamba out of the rotation. And I think if Batum goes and he's not in limited, I think Bamba's out of the rotation. They really like that Batum small ball lineup. Um, I could see it kind of going that way. Uh, we saw KJ Martin play a pretty good bit. Uh, after the game, Nick Nurse said he wanted to play Jeff Downton more. Now, bringing Kyle Lowry back in the mix. Did he just mean that for the game? I kind of think so. So we're kind of late on Downton, but we have him in the rotation based on the coaching comments, and he played pretty well um, in this game. So I think he still might sneak in there. Obviously, campaign. We saw him play longer since in the second half of the back-to-back. Wasn't even listed with the. He has the flu. Uh, throw a little bit more details on this illness. So played through it. Not as much commentary about him being limited. We saw two games ago he got pulled out three minutes because he couldn't breathe um, well enough to play NBA basketball. So. Yeah, but if Batum doesn't play, that would certainly lock in Mobamba, would give a little bit more leash to Paul Reed. We'd be looking at more KJ Martin. Uh, we would maybe see uh, Kelly Uber off the bench. They've been pretty locked and loaded with Uber. We had an over on him, which we felt really good about. Guy shoots 21 shots, uh, shoots poorly, and we still coast to that one. So shout out to us. But um, yeah, I think that's that's kind of where we're at here. Uh, and I, I guess they would probably just start. They might start KJ. I think they may like Uber in this, in this bench role, but it could definitely be Kelly Uber. In, uh, interesting on the idea of uh, starting KJ Martin there. That's not what I yeah. what I would have thought. Um, well, I think I I think they'll just oh just Lowry yeah, yeah 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 I think right. it would just be yeah, Lowry right. if they have Batum. I think they will start paying next to Lowry because they did that the game before and they seem okay. Yeah, with it's that, not so. Batum. It's not Batum. Anyways, I screw that up. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, think yeah. Batum starting regardless. That's my bad. So yeah, I already I, it's yeah it's gonna be Lowry healed campaign Paul Reed Tobias. So my bad. Yeah, yeah, and then Paul Reed. I would just note that this is like really volatile matchup for him because his athleticism and stuff can give Joval lots of problems potential, but the size disadvantage could also just bury Paul Reed. Um, so really wide range of outcomes for him. He's been coming on of late, uh, which has been nice uh, for, for those who have him in fantasy, but tonight's going to be a little bit of a potential roller coaster for Paul Reed as it usually is, but this is just a lot of size coming at the rim at him tonight. Um, Minnesota and Cleveland, Minnesota on the second night of a back to back here. Incredible. Uh, block mm -hmm. to win the game last night from Anthony Edwards. He's listed on the injury report, questionable ankle soreness. Uh, once again, ankle injury early on in the game, leaves, goes to the locker room, goes to the locker room multiple times during the game for this ankle issue. It has been a consistent issue that he's had for the last few weeks here. Um, we know Minnesota is generally conservative with questionable tags normally. So What's your read on the Anthony Edwards questionable tag tonight? There's still without obviously Carl Anthony Towns, and then Monty Morris is also going to be out as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that um, you guys watching this stream can pop up ads everywhere. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys saw the. I'm sure anyone watching this show, I'm sure saw all the Anthony Edwards stuff. First play of the game, steps on Aaron Neesmith's foot, goes to the locker room, stays back, comes in, goes back to the locker room, and then goes ham uh, late in the game. He, he is catching, if you guys listen to our pod, I set the over-under at four and a half, 40 balls the rest of the way. He, he knocked off one of those there. 
Uh, and then the block, man, that, that was just one of the best defensive plays of the season to, to win the game and, and not send it to OT, which which we are grateful for uh, as uh, Andrew Nemhard under betters. But, um, yeah, I mean, this happens a lot, right? Guys play through their ankle and then it swells up on them. They feel worse the next day. Blah, 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 right? I don't really have too much to add. He probably wants to play. I think he, like, really cares. Um, and, and we saw the last time he rolled his ankle, he got carried to the locker room, or help, I should say help, not carried, and then came back and still looked fine. So I think he's going to play. Um, definitely could see him missing. If he didn't play, it would be to kill Alexander Walker in the mix. Um, they are not going to have Monte Morris. He uh, pulled his hamstring last night. He's out with hamstring soreness. And then out of nowhere, Chris Finch says that if I'm a betting man, uh, we're going to play TJ Warren. Uh, we faded that we faded the bet. We were like, no, we don't believe you. Um, you know, like the meme, but he played him. Uh, could have, could it have been because of injuries maybe, but he got 16 minutes. He would be looking at a bunch. I don't think they would start him, but his minutes would be up. Uh, as expected, Nasri picked up a really big six man bench off the, uh, uh, bench roll matchup significantly worse. You're going up against the best matchup for big man for now or second best sorry washington uh versus one of the toughest uh even without evan mobley uh bigs have not produced uh against the Cavs. so uh, mike Conley's minutes won't change uh we saw kyle anderson he did have the, did have that hamstring about three two three weeks ago maybe doesn't play a bunch mcdaniel's foul trouble pretty standard so things could, could get pretty tight if ant doesn't play if ant's playing pretty much disregard the matchup sucks he would get isaac coro so um not something i wouldn't want to bet on i talked about betting ant overs yesterday I wouldn't want to do it on a bum ankle against Isaac Okoro today. Yeah, I kind of would like to see them sit and not for any like mm -hmm. selfish DFS uh, fantasy purposes. I'm just worried. Like this ankle is like these are kind of like small tweaks that keep like sending him to the locker room. I'm just worried we're like kind of inching towards the actual like meaningful ankle sprain that you know knocks him out a few weeks. So, um, but we'll see here. He's obviously. Uh, in I mean, chat's referencing him as Wolverine. That's basically what he's been this year. I mean, every time you think he's going to the locker room, he somehow, somehow heals and comes out stronger and is even better. So we'll see tonight. This is a 7.30 Eastern game, so we'll likely have that information close to lock. Cleveland side of things, uh, they're still without Donovan Mitchell, Evan Mobley, Max Struess, uh, Tristan Thompson, and the G-Leaguers. What are your expectations for Cleveland? Uh, yeah, they were back to back last game. That didn't stop Jared Allen from playing 37 minutes uh, after the game. JB Bickerstaff said that when he's at their best, Allen, they were at their best. So, yeah, tough ma matchup is the worst um, for them. So, it should be tough for Allen here. And then Darius Garland, man, like the touch time has been great. The drives haven't been. The shoot, we talked about this on the pod yesterday. It's just not scoring effectively around the basket this year uh, as his three point volume has gone up. So, whether it's confidence whatever the case from you know missing time for the job we don't know but matchup sucks gonna have probably a lot of jade mcdaniels on him and then they're probably starting the same five um you know dean wade to three dean wade got a lot of minutes at the four uh george niang jared allen obviously and i mentioned a coro uh, those guys should play a pretty good bit karis levert big role at the bench uh with 36 minutes perhaps may have been tied to sam merrill being ice cold going over nine uh, and then craig porter jr basically picking up uh the non garland minute so mostly a, and then we did actually have uh damian jones pick up all the non-allens um, which i expect to happen just because the matchup here so um yeah expecting mostly to run this situation back and this was the lineup we thought they would go with in the game against boston as well it was actually really surprising to us that they went with sam merrill there not only from a defensive perspective in terms of what you need from dean wade and um uh, against yeah. boston but also if you look at kind of balancing the two units um, if you think about Darius Garland and his unit, him and Jared Allen are going to run a ton of pick and roll. And what you want around that is like floor spacing shooters that are kind of standstill shooters, catch and shoot guys, right? Mm -hmm. Sam Merrill can be that guy, but Sam Merrill also has a lot of like the Duncan Robinson, Max Struess to him where he's like constant motion and that creates some offense on its own. So where do you need offense in the second unit? You need it alongside Karis LeVert, who is going to have his hands full, kind of creating all the offense in the second unit by himself. So having Merrill in that second unit to kind of operate um, as another offensive um, uh you know, hub of sorts mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. And then you get Craig Porter Jr. for the secondary handling, where in the first unit, you've got George Niang for a little bit of secondary handling alongside Jerry's Garland. So I think this balances the units a little bit better as well. So I'd expect this to continue, uh, yeah. even though it didn't play particularly well in the second night of the back-to-back -back there. And uh, just to note the Boston thing, they did have Moby to start that game, just to note that. Right. And then uh, one weird thing on the splits was uh, Sam Merrill and Donovan Mitchell, he's like shot a little bit better uh, with Donnie on the floor. So I don't know if that's like just whatever. Yeah. 
but it makes sense. You know, Donovan attracts defenses a lot more um, than Darius Garland does. We just talked about how sure. Garland isn't as impactful anymore. So I think Donovan kind of makes Merrill's effectiveness not as good. Uh, let's move to Orlando and New York, a game that I will have my eyes on tonight as we uh, root on hashtag our magic divisional futures. Um, Wendell Carter Jr. questionable for the magic tonight. Uh, that's the big injury note here. Right knee soreness. It popped up late game, uh, late day ad last time out. Missed that game. We saw Goga Batadze get the start. Uh, Mo Wagner um, in in a reserve role kind of helped them in the second unit in a much softer matchup than the matchup tonight with New York. Not to say that New York is a particularly daunting matchup these days, just that uh, it's softer than Washington. So what are your expectations for Wendell Carter Jr. tonight and uh, the Magic? Yeah, this is the knee injury that's really been bugging him. We saw him miss time in January. We saw that long uh, time off. So this is something that, that concerns me. Um, I expect a minute. We took a little minutes off him uh, just if he goes, because again, this is the knee thing that's been bothering him multiple cents this year. So, uh, and we even seen him, you know, come off the bench. Maybe that's the case here. Um, we'll see. So don't have a great read on that besides what I just said. Um, yeah. And then we'll get Markel Fultz uh, and Gary Harris back this time. So that'll get Gary Harris likely in the starting lineup. Uh, next to Jalen Suggs, Franz, and Powell. Uh, Franz, as he always does, he kills the Wizards. Uh, so a little bit, as you mentioned, you're going up against the best matchup for a bad, but not the worst matchup, as you mentioned. Uh, Powell's handling is still held up. All these guards are returning. Uh, Powell's still first in touch time the last handful of games. Uh, yeah, so um, rotations haven't been like too tight. But, you know, mid-30s, um, we did get more last time, which was nice to see. Um, and a great comeback. Uh, nice, a successful live bet for me. L- live bet the, the Magic in the first half and uh, came through with a big, big fourth quarter. Uh, Nick's side of the equation, we still without, of course, Julius Randle, OG Anobi, and Mitchell Robinson. The questionable tag for Jalen Brunson looms large here with that left knee contusion. We've seen when, it, when Jalen has been unable to go, it's been, you know, a lot of Deuce McBride. Um, they they have Shake Milton available behind Deuce McBride, but he was not utilized uh, last game. So what are your expectations on if we see Jalen Brunson's return tonight? Yeah, so sorry, my computer's slow here, so I won't have the box go up in a second. But let's get some background on Brunson. He went through some of practice, according to Tom Thibodeau, uh, and Tom Thibodeau did not know his designation. It turns out it was questionable. I would say he's a lock to be game time decision. I think he's got a decent chance to play here um you know knee contusion but he got full imaging all this stuff so it's kind of concerning and then not going through full practice Thibodeau's not like some coaches really want you to go through a full practice like Steve Kerr is an example of that but Tibbs not so much so I don't have a great feel for it but I do expect him to be a game time decision at best so we um we took a little off him we're used to like 40 minutes sometimes for Brunson so we only have 36 and a half so expecting a, a slight limit on him if he can go um, all right, let's move to Atlanta and Memphis. On the Atlanta side, the injury report very full here. No Trey Young, no Anyeka Okongwu, no Jalen Johnson after that right ankle sprain. Also listed out Kobe Bufkin, and then most of the G leaguers. Vic Krejci is listed as available here. What are your notes on Atlanta? Yeah, their their G leagues are are in town, so we're keeping an eye if they do upgrade anyone. Um, my computer's running real slow here. Uh, so the headline here, here I see is Jalen Johnson. Really tough scene. Uh, just the injuries mounting up all over the place, especially in the front court. Uh, so he is going to miss this one, and I would expect him to miss multiple games. Man. Still got me? In and out, nope. freezing a little bit. So Damn it. In and out, yeah. That can, yeah. Maybe pot, try popping back out and popping back in or shine some stuff down on the computers. I'll talk through the Atlanta situation if you want to yeah, take like- some time. Okay. Cool. So, so on the, okay. on the Atlanta front without Jalen Johnson, um, that put likely elevates Yandre Hunter back in the starting lineup. He was on a minutes limitation uh, during the course of the back-to-back of the last two games. So we think those minutes will come back up. They're a team that's been willing to play um, very, very tight rotations just naturally kind of throughout the season. So um, a spot for DeAndre Hunter's minutes to elevate Sadiq Bay and Bogdan Bogdanovich minutes get really secure here um, in the absence of Jalen Johnson, who is also having like a really big role in a lot of ways for this team. He was playing at times as a second unit center. 
that should um, make Bruno Fernando's minutes much more stable. We've got a full 48 center minutes between Clint Capella and Bruno Fernando without Jalen Johnson around because we don't think they can play those type of small ball lineups with like Sadiq Bay at center. It's just not enough mm-hmm. size. We'll probably see Wes Matthews or Vic Crutchy kind of get into the rotation here along with uh, Trent Forrest as the backup for DeJounte Murray, who's got a huge role in the absence of Trey Young. Mike, anything you want to add on Atlanta? Yeah, DeAndre Hunter. You know, I said I was going to stop talking about DeAndre Hunter possibly starting. Hey, I'm doing it today because uh, I think he, I think he's going to get the start without Jalen Johnson. So he's maxed out at 29 minutes in the non-back-to-back game. He had a minutes limit on him, according to Quinn Snyder last game. But he hasn't been talking about a minutes limit in a non-back-to-back. This is the first back-to-back he had played in multiple months. I forget. The, I think it's November. Like I think it's December 6th. Whatever it is. It's a while. So since he had the knee injury, for sure. So... I think he could play full. So we went with 31 minutes because, again, his minutes were – he was coming off the bench for 29. No comments about back about limits on non-back-to-back games. So I think he could be full. Now he won't play like 37, 38 like we saw from Sadiq Bey playing 41. But he could – I could see him playing like 35 or something like that. And then the other thing – I mean, they could be really tight, man. Like we've seen Bogdan kind of get cut down because they're finding room for Hunter. We saw him even close with Hunter – Bay at the basically two when they had Jalen Johnson and Capella. Now you take Jalen Johnson and it's like upper 30s minutes out. And then we don't really have a lot of confidence in, you know, um, Trent Forrest for many minutes, Rick Kretschy, who snuck in there, as you mentioned. I think he just snuck in there because they didn't want to get Hunter's minutes up in that back to back. Had mm-hmm. had the Hunter minutes limit not been on him, I think they would have just subbed him in there and like, you know, cut Kretschy out. So we do have Kretschy in for minutes, but it could ju- they could just run this thing so tight. Uh, so yeah, Hawk season, um, definitely on this, uh, definitely pretty pumped for that. Um, there, you know, nice win for them as well. And then yeah, DeJounte's role is insane. Uh, his, since last five games, the only player that has more touch time than him is Luka Doncic. So, uh, could be a very big DeJounte Murray game. Yeah. And we may think of the Atlanta Hawks season as like disappointing and underwhelming and kind of over, but they're in the 10th spot in the play in. And so they still have hopes alive. They have a, f- a three and a half game lead on Brooklyn for that 10th spot, four games in the loss column, and just two behind the Bulls for the ninth spot to potentially get a home game uh, in that play in. So they're still going to be playing, you know, full tight rotations whenever they can to get games. And this is not um, a back to back, either the back end or the front end. They've got a day off tomorrow as well. So look for tight rotations again there tonight. Uh, Memphis. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, Desmond Bain and Brandon Clark and John Morant and Scotty Pippen Jr. and Derek Rose and Marcus Smart and Yuta Watanabe and Zaire Williams are all still out. Uh, now they've got Luke Kennard doubtful and they've got Gigi Jackson questionable. Jaron Jackson Jr. is not listed on the injury report. He was questionable mm-hmm. last game, went through the game and played awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. Like one of the best performances from Jaron all year, 30 points, 11 boards, six mm-hmm. blocks, really dominated the game against Philadelphia's uh, smaller front court. No, no, uh, likely no Kennard, possibly no Juju Jackson. Uh, what does that mean for Memphis tonight? Yeah, you know, I hate the Grizzlies, right? You know, I like to bet against them. You know, I'm not betting against today. This guy, uh, matchup cover boy, Jaron Jackson. Uh, I just want to talk about his role. Um, for he's a center, he had 17 drives, he had six pick and roll handler possessions, four isolate. He's a center, and he had six blocks. And he has like Luca like usage. He has arguably the best role, and he's like Wembenyama without the Rookie of the Year trophy going to him with the role he has right now. So um, love this matchup. Uh, Atlanta uh, big rim funnel. Capello can't guard him. He's gonna get open threes for days. Uh, very excited uh, about Jaron Jackson Jr. today. Um, so yeah, no Kennard's a big deal, and we talked a lot about the Jordan Goodwin game count. So Ryan Schwepfinger, who actually wrote the the underdog. Uh, preview that you, you'll see at 10 Eastern in the morning. Uh, we were kind of doing the math and he has 12 games left. So he signed his contract on, I think it was February 24th. They had 20, uh, 25 games left prorated 60%. So he had 15. He signed, he played three games on that. So he has 12 games left. This is, a, this has to be a game that they use him. So I'm expecting Goodwin to start, um, you know, since they're missing Zaire, Derek, all those, they're missing all, they're missing like all their guards. Uh, so it should be him. Uh, conch, Jaron, Vince Williams, and Santi Aldama off the bench. Jake Laravia, uh, double-double again. Uh, huge game. His role has been massive. Uh, the Mar Stevens minutes have been kind of fading down uh, because of uh, Jake Laravia stepping up. Gigi Jackson, I think, will be a, um, 
first Q tag for him for, for this issue. So this is new. Don't have any details on it. We never do. It's Memphis. Uh, Taylor Jenkins didn't say anything, but it is new for sure. Um, so, yeah, we'll see if if he plays. If he doesn't, they may have to use one of the Trey Jemison days. I think I didn't do the math, but he has like 10 left. Um, but, yeah, this could be concentrated, concentrated minutes. You know, we love uh, players against the Hawks. I will note, though, the Hawks defense, since Trey's gone down, has been way better. Um, you know, they're not like bottom five anymore. They've been like middle of the pack. So um, not as good, but still expect this to be a, a pretty good scoring spot for the really the worst offense in the NBA. Should also note with regards to Trey Jemison, they signed Wenyan Gabriel to a 10-day yeah. contract as well. So there's a little bit more front court depth there if they choose to use it instead of using Trey Jemison. So that's one thing that we might want to watch tonight. Just if Absolutely. you see like if you see Trey Jemison inactive, you might see some Wenyan Gabriel tonight. Oh, that reminds me that oh, yeah, Matt Ryan's contract's up. So we may have to adjust that. Yeah, Matt, Matt Ryan's contract. I'm sorry, not Matt Ryan. Matt, Ryan. Matt Hurt. Uh, Matt Hurt. Matt Hurt. Matt Hurt. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and they're going to cycle. Th- they're going to cycle through some 10 day contracts here towards the end of the season. Yeah. Um, okay, let's keep it moving with Miami and Oklahoma City. I'll start on the Oklahoma City side, um, where the only thing they have listed is a G leaguer Adam Flagler out. So no injury concerns for Oklahoma City. Uh, they're rested here. They're getting Miami on the second night of a back to back. Uh, what are your thoughts or notes on the Thunder tonight? Yeah, healthy. Uh, Jalen Williams, Jay Will is back. Um, we don't know if he's going to play a lot. I don't think they're going to want to use him against Bam. Uh, so we got him at like single digits. Uh, I think they could just play uh, Kenrich Williams. Kenrich Williams played a pretty good bit in the matchup earlier against Miami. Um, but yeah, they're they're healthy. So um, love to see it. Uh, terrible matchup for Chet Holmgren. Miami's defense has been really good. They've been the best rim defense basically their last 15 games or so. Um, their transition defense has been really, really good. Uh, the uh, Thunder are number one in transition scoring, so that'll be a bit of a strength versus strength there. So I'll be watching that. Uh, obviously, J Dub is crushing. This is uh, my the Miami game was when J Dub missed the triple double by one assist. Love his matchup. I think he's in a really big spot. Um, SGA, as we all expected, coasted uh, in the um, uh, last game. 37, easy, easy 37. Um, so yeah, a pretty good spot here. Josh Giddy's been playing well. Now, I'm a little bit nervous because this strikes me as a spot where they look to Isaiah Joe. We saw Isaiah Joe play 25 minutes in the last Miami game. You need three-point shooting against the Heat here. So I think this could be one of the games where Isaiah Joe cuts into Giddy, despite how Giddy's played pretty well the last two games. Uh, and then Gordon Hayward's minutes are ticking up. I don't think they're really going to play him more than 20. Though. I think they're pretty comfortable um, with this spot. So um, And then, yeah, the other note was I remember doing the show last time and we were wondering how much zone Miami was going to play. And they played like a little bit. I think they played like 13 possessions. So, um, yeah, pretty uh, pretty good, pretty interesting match. Probably the, one of the best matchups um, from an, like an X's and O's coach versus coach standpoint. I'm curious to see how uh, these guys handle each other. Yeah, Haywood's starting to look a little healthier um, as well. Not only the minutes ticking up, but just in terms of movement on the floor, looking a little bit better of late. So it'll be inter- I'm really interested to see if they can get him up to like a – fuller speed Gordon Hayward come playoff time and what that, what dimension that would add to them uh, as a team. Cause we just it, Gordon Hayward has been battling through injuries all year. And when he first got here, he was clearly not healthy. Um, Miami side, I was trying to buy time till the two thirty yeah. injury report was we'll filed. Uh, we will push it going further because um, they still have not filed. So we'll come back to Miami. We'll move to Houston and Portland on the Houston side of things. They're still without uh, Steven Adams lost to Eason for the season. Of course, they've got Jeff green listed questionable here. Jabari Smith jr. Is off the injury report. So that's good news for him. What are your notes on the Rockets? Yeah, let's go uh, Jabari. Uh, he had some foul trouble in the last game, so uh, and he had a long rotation as well, so mostly throwing it out, but he's run pretty bad, so I don't know. We kind of dinged him just for running bad, um, which you know is not usually my, especially for Jabari. So if I want to ding Jabari Smith, it's probably for good reason. Um, you, know, I, you, you know I want to up minutes. But um, yeah, I don't really have, have much to add besides that. I, I do actually have to ask, uh, talk Shingoon. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen the stats. Uh, he has been... Mercy. Yeah, have, I'm sorry. Have, mercy, think, have, mer- have mercy on the Alpern Shankun. Rabbit ears, rabbit ears, rabbit ears think. Um, so last two, 34, 18, and 9, 40 minutes per game. Uh, touches, 63 front court, that's tops. 12 and a half elbow touches, that's tops in the last two. 99 front court touches, only Joker and Halliburton had more. Um, just cutting like crazy. Uh, last two games, 37 points as a cutter or a roller. Uh, assisted by Fred Van Vliet eight times. So credit to Fred Van Vliet and Jalen Green actually has done to a few times. So yeah, just 
just absolute smash, man. Uh, and this is one of the best spots you can get. So uh, we could see a lot of goon just pl- passing so well out of doubles right now. Uh, he is absolutely clicking. He is making a push for uh, most improved. Uh, if he keeps playing like this, he might win it, man. Uh, now he won't keep playing like this. Um, but yeah, I, I, and we talked, you, you gave me some crap in our Slack. One of my worst takes was like, I'm worried about Shingun uh, with the new coaching staff. Horrible take uh, from your boy. So, uh, you know, I pat myself on the back. Shout out to me for the Derek Lively benching, despite the minutes being wrong. But uh, I will take a big old L on uh, being a, a, a dog on a, a bear on Shingun. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll recap the man versus machine arguments coming into the season uh, at the end of the season and in the off season. But that is one for the machine uh, over the man as Upper and Shingun has outperformed even the machine's expectations this year. Uh, Trailblazer side, they, their injury report is once again very very full. I guess the good news here is Scoot Henderson was upgraded to doubtful. Uh, he's been listed out the last few games, so maybe we're getting closer to a return on Scoot. DeAndre Ayton is also doubtful here. They're still without Malcolm Brogdon and Shade and Sharp, who are both listed out. And then they've got the questionable tags on Tamani Kamara, Jeremy Grant, and instead of Matisse Tybel, it's now on Jabari Walker. But that trio mm-hmm. has been the questionable tags of late. So what are your expectations for what we see from Portland tonight? Uh, yeah, a lot of Q tags. Jeremy Grant does not have a history of hamstring. This is a back-to-back, so I think there's a pretty good chance he sits. I don't have really any details on the Jabari hip contusion. Very very rarely do. Um, I watched a good bit of this game. I didn't see anything happen. Um, maybe I just missed it, but anywho. Uh, yeah, so uh, kind of flying blind there. Um, if Grant sits and Jabari's in, we expect him to start. Uh, a lot of commentary on Chris Murray, who guarded SGA a pretty good bit in this game. Uh, the Murray bros are, are picking up some pretty big defensive assignments these days. Uh, so he's, I think, locked and loaded. Obviously, Anthony Simons is playing a ton. He's playing like over 40 in the last uh, uh, last four competitive games that they've been in. The role's been sh- really strong. Pick and roll handling out the wazoo uh, way up. Uh, Delano Banton's minutes uh, could also um, be there um, as well. And he would, he might even start again if, if Grant didn't play. So a couple ways this can go again, just like the Tumani Kamara could start. Like there's so many iterations of these Q tags that it's tough to, to parse through, but uh, for sure we're sitting, we're getting do up restarting, assuming no eight and upgrade. And as I mentioned last time, eight and went from questionable to doubtful to doubtful again today. So that's not a good sign for a hand sprain. It's cost them like multiple weeks now. It looks like, so yeah, I think hope, but um, Ryan repair got talked up a lot and it's pretty much, he's locked in. I think repair is playing regardless. And that might be why they're listing grant, honestly, um, because they want to get a look at repair. There was an interesting comment from Chauncey Billups uh, because he's uh, French and he didn't speak English very well. So Billups is like talking through the games and Hey, you know, when you're playing basketball and you're coaching, you can't, you know, you can't like, you know, if any of your friends, you know, don't speak English, you talk to them slower, right? Like you want to make sure they're understanding what you're saying, you know, all that. So he's talking about how it's hard to coach him in the game because he's trying to, you know, coach him, coach him real time when the game's going on. And he says sometimes the language barrier was tougher for him earlier, but that language barrier is getting a little bit easier to penetrate through. It's just, I love just weird. I don't hear stuff like that in presser. So just wanted to kind of share that. Um, but yeah, uh, bottom line, I think repairs in the uh, rotation kind of going forward. Um, any quotes on Banton? Because he's played pretty well yeah. for them and effectively for them. Um, obviously, the plus minus last game wasn't great, but just he's mm-hmm. been willing to take on kind of an offensive role and he's kind of benefited in these games that Jeremy Grant has missed as well. Yeah, he's in there too, man. He's been playing, you know, his size has been big. He's picking up some wing defensive matchups as well. So I think he's in regardless too. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe they just sit Jabari out to play these guys. Like, I feel like these yeah. two tags are just like, okay, let's just sit you out in the front end and then maybe play you on the back end or whatever they are in. They get Toronto tomorrow at home. So there's no travel at all. So they could just kind of pick their spot. All right, let's go back to Miami as they did file on the 230 injury report. They're still without Tyler Hero, Kevin Love and Josh Richardson. They've listed Caleb Martin as available here. Notable on the second night of a back-to-back that there's no tags on guys like Jimmy Butler, Duncan Robinson, Bam Adebayo. So Mm -hmm. it looks for now we, with Miami, you can always get kind of late day ads. Um, but it looks like for now, a relatively stable injury report. Any other thoughts on the heat? Yeah, um, Terry Rozier, Um talked about this, what, the last two shows we've done Miami that old Spolster said they want to kind of feature him more. Well, we got that. Uh, massive, massive output, 40 minutes. We got him at 32 and a half minutes here, I think, today for you know almost a nine-point spread and a back-to-back. It could be a lot more. And this could be like the new Rozier because the commentary has been lining up with him. The, um, Pick and roll handling was up, but the production finally came along with it 
um, in the last game. Matchup, obviously, way tougher here. Um, not sure how it's going to go out, uh, shake out. I think they would probably put uh, Dort on Rogier and then J-Dub on Jimmy. Um, that's kind of my guess. So keep an eye on that. Rotation should be mostly the same. But I wouldn't be surprised if Nik- Nikola Jovic loses his starting spot. Just like the matchup's so tough, man. Like they're just going to drive down their throat all day. Um, so I wouldn't be. And we saw, I think he might get a nominal start. And we saw Caleb Martin play a ton. They needed the on ball defense. He on ball defense in a significant way in the spot. I don't think you really want to play too big, especially with the transition offense. So I think Jovic is on a pretty short leash. We got him at 17 minutes. But again, here's a chance he gets pulled out. Um, as well. Um, should also note Caleb Martin didn't play in the last OKC game, so don't really have a reference point. But Haywood Highsmith played a bunch, and he was the SGA primary, expecting Caleb to be uh, the primary for most of the game. And again, I don't know if they want to put Rogier on him or anyone on him. So that's kind of like it's just tough. Like I think that's why I kind of think that uh, Spo may have to make a tweak to his lineup because SGA is just that good. Uh, all right, Milwaukee and the Lakers, the last game of the slate to talk through here on the Milwaukee side. Still no Chris Middleton. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo has been upgraded to probable uh, after playing through a, mm-hmm. and playing effectively through the questionable tag last game. Um, it's the same listing, the left Achilles tendonitis, but the probable tag is encouraging here. What are the notes do you have on Milwaukee? Uh, yeah, he looked pretty full. Uh, didn't play well. Um, shout out to us. You know, winning Giannis under is you know always nice. Although we did lose Halliburton is another white whale, which we did not uh, get in a boat yesterday. But yeah, 33 minutes with blowout. So we thought he'd be a little bit limited minutes wise. He was not. He had full third rotation uh, off an Achilles. Again, Doc said that if they start, if they play him, he's healthy. So yeah, we got the national TV game, Lakers coming off a loss. We got 36 and a half minutes. He could beat that for sure. Yeah, he looks to be locked and loaded. Matchup's not great. Uh, Lakers rim defense is pretty good on the year, although it's been pretty bad lately. Their last 10 ish games, they're like bottom three in rim efficiency allowed. So I could see a pretty big Giannis game. Uh, The other note, Damian Lord um, did lose a little bit of offensive role. Well, compared to the 40 ball, of course he did, but uh, the touches were still there. He had over minutes, over eight minutes of touch time. So he, this has been doc, doc rivers. thing has been like getting the ball in Dame's hands more. And we've seen that really start to trend up uh, for Dame. So really good spot for Dame. We love guards against the Lakers. Uh, almost cover boyed him. Um, I I double dare you or Sam to flag plant. Uh, are they in the slate today? They they are not. It's I uh, believe it's I believe it's six games on both DFS sites. So uh, the two sad, ten o'clock games I believe are cut off. Yeah, yeah. We, we could you could uh, flag plant. I, I'll I'll flag plant Dame <laughs> guilt free. Okay. Um, so I mean at I'll, at this at this point with my flag plant run, I should just I should, might as well lean yeah. in and just flag plant Dame, and yeah. that's like the only way to snap out of the streak, but. <laughs> um for yeah. sure yeah uh, and then other than that um seeing i wanted to see a little bit more of the the big man the big the big three brooke Giannis, and bobby portis he's only seen 25 minutes of on the year maybe they do it here against the lakers size so that's kind of the only other note um leap beasley ice cold last game don't have too much to add um and then yeah jake crowder's minutes are, are kind of getting cut down because bobby's been so good yep um, all right, Lakers side of things, LeBron James questionable, Anthony Davis probable, Cam Reddish probable. It's the same injury report that we see pretty mm-hmm. much every day. Still without Jared Vanderbilt, Gabe Vincent, and Christian Wood. Um, so once again, you know, LeBron has, you know, miraculously played through 85 to 90 percent of these questionable tags all year long. Yeah. Uh, any notes on the Lakers? Yeah, he's playing. Um, no doubt. National TV game against Giannis. I don't think there's too much to add. Man, this pop up ad's annoying. Uh, go away, discover it. I don't have your credit card anymore. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the story. Um, uh, LeBron, Matt, the role's been great. Uh, among non point guards, he leads the NBA in touch time. Uh, he's been picking up a huge handling role, taking some away from D'Angelo Russell. His touch time's a little bit down. Austin Reeves shooting the ball a little bit more. Expect Austin Reeves to be guarded by Damian Lillard, Mike Beasley guarding. Um, uh, sorry, D'Angelo Russell and then Jay Crowder. We, there's been a whole decade of like Jay Crowder could could slow down LeBron. I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, so more of a more of a LeBron spot. Anthony Davis obviously going to be get, getting guarded by Brook Lopez. One of the tougher matchups for him. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie's minutes are kind of coming alive. Pretty tight rotation in the last game, and their offense has been great. They've been a top three offense in the last month. So um, again, they've like I mentioned, their defense has gotten a little bit worse, and their offense has gotten a little bit better. Where the Bucks, their offense has gotten a little bit worse, and their defense has gotten a little bit better. So, uh, kind of interesting uh, trends for for these two teams. Yep. 
Um, all right, that'll do it for this edition of Establish Runs NBA Injury Report Analysis Show. As always, if you're interested in supporting the content that we're putting out there, the best way to do so is to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are, I believe, 250 or so subscribers shy of our goal of 5,000 by the end of the uh, NBA season. So we'd appreciate your help in getting closer to that goal by hitting that subscribe uh, button and you can hit the bell if you want to get notifications whenever we go live with content. Um, also, if you're interested in our premium content, you can check out Establish Run dot com slash subscribe dash mba for more details on our premium product offerings the dfs packages uh the props uh betting package as well if you're interested in the prop stuff we highly encourage you to read the faq and understand kind of what you're getting into the challenges of getting the bets and whatnot but we do have a demonstrated uh, track record of success there if you're interested uh, on the dfs side it'll be me and som jeffarina on the dfs show uh behind the paywall today at five o'clock eastern talking to the good chalk the bad chalk the leverage plays and of course the flag plants uh which have been just you know who to fade uh from me <laughs> of late but we'll we'll turn it around i mean uh soon enough um and of course if you're interested in supporting this free content and keeping this show specifically free the best way to do it is to hit that like button you can smash it you can press it you can hold it uh you can press it you can caress it whatever you'd like to do to that like button uh just make sure it gets pushed so we can help feed that algorithm which helps feed our families and allows us to feed you the nba injury information analysis you need each and every day to set your season-long lineups your dfs lineups and make your spread bets and your prop bets so Smash that like button, feed that algorithm. Nom, 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 nom. Have a great weekend, everybody.